This movie is immortal. A legendary team named Kashiai humiliates a squad of Nazis who offended his dog. <laughs> Jungle. Film, based on the national linguistic traditions of Finland, begins with the thermal stage of the fever, the gold rush. Prospector Atami finds grains of precious metal, which he informs the gloomy heavens with a good obscenity. Those, in turn, ignore him. The peasant, under the supervision of a horse, remembers the classics need more gold and begins to dig. Even Hans Muchi, a Luftwaffe pilot flying overhead with colleagues, does not distract him from important matters. The prospector lets go of the planes, and the next morning he crafts his wealth again. So the harsh Scandinavian days fly by. The pit in which a man buries his talent and best years becomes more and more bottomless, until one day he stumbles upon a walled-up SI Tripeo. No, just a gold mine. Not believing his luck, and there he falls on his back, fantasizing about how to insert gold teeth in three rows, like a shark. Having gathered, the prospector goes riding on a horse to dump the loot by a dealer in the city, and the faithful Sabakin runs after him. Here in history the Nazis appear on their medical equipment with crosses on the sides. They look with surprise at the passing atomy. In the tarpaulin-covered truck bed, Deputy Chief Nazi Wolf methodically rapes captive local women, but, attracted by the appearance of a bearded cowboy, climbs onto the tank to get a better look at him. Bruno, an uber-Nazi, also known as the squad commander, is already sitting there in a stylish leather jacket. Wolf wants to salute the local as a greeting to the fighting in the head, but Bruno forbids, as if sensing that then there will be no movie. The way of the horseman runs past local men hanged on poles, followed by, and there he stumbles upon a second group of German interventionists. This is extremely interesting, what is a lonely old man doing here? The sin of greed seized the Nazi souls, but they notably miscalculated. And there he pierces an empty pumpkin of a German soldier with a knife and looks at the others in a bad way. The prospector diligently dirties his hands up to the elbow in the blood of the occupiers, resorting to firearms only at the very curtain of the disassembly. And Tammy understands that the shots will attract the attention of the main enemy forces. And so it happens. Bruno turns the tank around to find a pile of corpses. Realizing that the Fuhrer will not appreciate leaving such a thing unpunished, the officer finds a gold nugget hidden in the wounded man. Figuring that there is no one more suitable nearby to assign blame, Bruno sets off in pursuit of the old man. Adamy reacted to the warning shot by quickly disappearing from the sight. But over the hill, his horse accidentally steps on a mine. A slightly dumbfounded prospector, realizing that the horse cannot be cured with plantain, collects the scattered gold, while I am with the fog, the Nazi technique slowly floats out. Looking at the collection of gold, Bruno again does not allow Wolf to launch the final credits ahead of schedule. But when the officer finally commands the fire, the cunning Finn throws a stone and detonates a mine between the Germans and himself, creating a smoke screen, hiding behind a piece of iron from enemy fire, and then departs. A minute later, Bruno tells the soldier to go into the smoke and find the body. He carefully bypasses the mines, moving forward. But all in vain. The prospector turns on the mortar mode and throws a mine right into the head of the hapless Fritz, undermining him. Then the officer sends two more fighters to the side of the road, but it is also mined there. After reaching the remains of the horse, Bruno finds a strange prospector's token. Then the Germans move forward in a column, letting two bound captives in front of them. Inside the tank, Wolf gets in touch with the general, who orders to drop everything and move towards Norway. For those in the tank, the chief explained, slowly and twice, that they had met the legendary Finnish commando, the punitive man of the USSR Winter War. For his elusiveness, bloodlust and efficiency, he was nicknamed Koschai the Immortal. Despite the frightening details and the direct order, Bruno orders to continue the pursuit. He explains to Wolf that the Reich is losing the war, which means that many Germans will die. Who before the end of the war, who after it, as a war criminal. But the gold from Koschai's reserves will help them to dump far away. Meanwhile, the wounded Atomy, hiding behind the island of a burnt-out truck, is self-medicating in the field. His faithful dog runs after his master, wisely keeping at a distance. Dozing off, the old man lets the Germans get too close. They literally breathe German fumes into the back of their heads. It's just a pity, first of all, they didn't think of the only thing for many kilometers to inspect the shelters. While the infantry with dogs sniffed out enemies in the rear, and there it rolls under the bottom of a moving truck and clings to it from below. He breaks through the gas tank and discourages the shepherds from sniffing. But this does not go unnoticed. The column slows down, but not as against the only target in the field, but simply stops. 
Taking advantage of the opportunity, the Finnish Kashiai makes his feet. He notices him, and Bruno tells him to let the dogs down. The old man strikes a match, igniting the gasoline spilled on himself, after which, under the fire of machine guns, he rushes into the nearest lake, where he literally lies at the bottom. The Germans are waiting on the shore when the cheeky old man swims out, but he, having surfaced for a breath of air, immediately disappears under the water. Bruno sends soldiers to dive for gold. Those, having come up with nothing better, jump into dark waters right in their clothes. The first one is met downstairs by an atomy with a knife. Having cut his throat, the old man greedily swallows bubbles of air coming out of his lungs. When a blood stain appears on the surface, Bruno gestures to the next soldier for gold, but even that soon swelled with bloody bubbles. There were three Germans in the boat, not counting the dog, which was not there. The latter leans on the oars, wanting to avoid death at the hands of Koschai, but Wolf's German shot ended the worthless Nazi life. Only now the boat got to the opposite shore anyway, and Tammy carefully dragged it on a string. Hiding behind the body of a German killed by his own, Finn runs away under heavy machine gun fire from the tank's turret. A prospector's dog runs out to the pier, where the German sadly watched the fleeing wealth. At the sight of her officer, Bruno has a brilliant idea. The path of the atomy runs past the battlefield, where military equipment is smoking, burning down. He goes out to the burning ruins of the city destroyed by the Nazis a little earlier. The old man moves on and, when it gets dark, finds shelter at a destroyed gas station, where he tries to rest in a nervous and shaky sleep. He is distracted by a dog barking, and a furry dependent is wagging his tail outside. Kashiai is glad to have a four-legged friend, but at the last moment he notices a grenade strapped to him. The man unhooks her to throw her away, but the blast wave throws him back and he loses consciousness. In this state, fascists find Adami, who offer to say the last word before hanging. The old man is lifted up in a loop, and when he got used to hanging and stopped twitching, the Germans repeat the feet of Hera at the bell, they take off their hats one by one. Bruno turns around and leaves, taking the honestly selected gold, and the subordinates follow his example. After getting rid of prying eyes, the unkillable Atomy begins to swing on the Nazi swing in order to catch hold of the protruding rebar with a wound in her body. In the morning, the faithful dog winds near the gallows of the owner, while he saves strength and air. When a plane flies over the gas station, the gallows is rooted by the flow of air and the restless fin falls in winter. Two pilots in search of fuel are searching the gas station, bumping into Atomy, realizing that in front of him is a Nazi and the old man is not too ceremonious with someone who wants to shoot his dog, knocking out with a deft kick. The second prospector is stunned by a blow to the head, after which he thinks a hard thought, how to continue living this life. Realizing that now he has not only honed skills and self-esteem, but also an airplane, and there he patches wounds on the body with improvised means and ingenuity, while the aviation Germans come to their senses. The dog at this time diligently eats fairy tales made from a bowl, which previously protected the German bowler. Bruno's column stumbles upon a sudden obstacle, a plane stuck in textures. There is a dead pilot in the cockpit, but he did not die from the collision, but was hanged. Wolf recognizes the rope. He recently hung a fin on it, from whom they had requisitioned gold. Suspecting that the former owner of the garrote is somewhere nearby, Bruno tells the colony to avoid obstacles and move on. In the back of the truck, the captured girls smile when they hear the Germans talking about Kashiai. One of them says that if you take everything away from the legendary Sisu, he will begin to take revenge, returning until all the offenders die. When she finishes the story, one patroller falls dead, and the second, looking out, falls right under the tank tracks. An old man Adami climbs into the vacant place in the body. He hands the trophy Schmeisser to the girl so that she can provide all possible assistance in the unequal struggle with former allies. From the body, the prospector pokes a bayonet knife into the driver's cabin. In his old age, the eye has become not so sharp, so he only makes ventilation in the driver's skull on the third attempt. Having thrown away the body, the hero puts the girl behind the wheel, after which he proceeds to the Hitler kaput operation, telling him to slow down to shorten the distance, and then jumps onto the tank following him. Then a truck stuffed with women catches up with a similar transport full of soldiers. The tarpaulin is carefully lifted and the ladies, using the element of surprise, shoot the rapists. And there he is engaged in useful work, he is hammering the hatch, hoping to find the gold stolen from him inside. Bruno, having calculated the time, tells the conductor to press the brakes, and inertia throws the old man to the ground. The faithful wolf leans out of the hatch and shoots at Finn, but he, as a citizen of Nepal, is not made with a finger. Hiding behind his armor, he climbs in from behind and pulls out an unsuspecting German like a carp from a river. Having arranged a fight on the armor, a hot Finnish guy and his Nazi counterpart fall in the winter. Bruno, noticing the loss of a fighter, 
tells him to go faster while the restless Kashiai is busy. The old man is ready to finish off Wolf, but then a motorcycle with a sidecar and two Germans appears, deciding that he needs the first, but not the second, and Tammy gestures to the enemies to run, and they, having estimated the chances, give the transport in exchange for lives. Leaving the beaten Wolf, he diligently starts chasing the tank on a motorcycle. Not believing in his luck, the German turns his head at the sound of footsteps and sees a line of women who were in his captivity in the morning. Bruno gets to the airfield on a tank, where a plane is waiting for him. After shooting the mech warrior, the last of the remaining allies, the officer and the pilot board, preparing for an emergency evacuation. The plane begins to take off on the runway when an atomy comes out to meet it, bumping out of the Schmeissers like a Rambo. Nevertheless, the machine lifts off the ground, forcing the old man to jump with a pickaxe at the ready to meet. The pilot sees the motorcycle below, unaware that the legendary Finn is hanging outside, clinging to the fuselage. He is almost blown away by a stream of air, but thanks to his ingenuity in scenic armor, and there he grabs the chassis. The fulcrum allows him not to turn the earth over, but to gouge a hole in the hull. At the sound of damage to the skin, Bruno gets out of the cockpit with a machine gun, but almost catches a thrown pickaxe with his face. The last duel begins between the officer and the prospector. The German pretends to be winning for a long time and drearily. Bruno hovers over the old man, hanging him with care, flipping with a belt with a metal carbine. And Tammy gets up from the floor, despite the broken face in the trash. Bruno swings for another blow, but the old man, having intercepted the belt, hooks the carbine to the bomb and pulls the lever of the bombaluk. The officer, having stopped worrying, but not having fallen in love with the atomic bomb, strives downwards to finish his earthly journey enchantingly. Finn notices that the plane is tilting nose down. The pilot died during the disassembly and tilted the steering wheel, and one engine failed. The prospector is looking for gold in the cabin, for which everything was started, after which he firmly fixes himself in a sitting position before the aircraft crashes nose into the ground. A little later, by a miracle, the survivor, and there with a box full of gold, gets out of the swamp. Taking a captured motorcycle and a faithful dog, he goes to the capital. Entering the bank, the old man pours nuggets in front of the clerk and, uttering the first words in the whole movie, asks to exchange them for large bills. Paper, tea will be easier to carry. This is the end of the heavy prohibited substances, and with them the film.